So today's class is going to focus on building um, dynamic stability in the hips. So we'll have a lot of uh, interesting exercises to help our hips become really springy and supportive. And then we'll have experiments to uh, see if our um, our awake hips can help us explore in new and exciting ways. Uh, so with that, we will actually begin um, kneeling, but if you're already in a comfortable seated position, you're welcome to stay where you are um, for just our breath awareness, and then I'll have you shift to kneeling in a moment because you guys all look um, supported and perfect. So from whatever your supported seat is, close your eyes if it feels comfortable. And start to notice the breath. I know all of you have meditation practices. And even as conscious yogis in the world, sometimes on um, this first portion of class, uh, is like putting on the brakes on our day, our mind. We might not even realize how much momentum and speed we have accumulated through the day. And so just give yourself these next few moments to start unwinding some of that momentum. And let the breath slow down just a little bit in a really effortless sort of way. And notice if that gentle slowing and smoothing of the breath helps pull you into the present moment and the state of your body right now. As the breath helps you become more aware of your inner dimension, you may notice little areas of tightness, numbness, different sensations, and just give yourself permission to be able to make little adjustments. If you notice that an area is tight, sometimes it can be helpful to wiggle a little bit in that space. And we'll just take a few more breaths. Hi, Diana, welcome. Letting the breath continuously pull us into our bodies and the experience of the present. And if you're not already kneeling, um, take a moment to move any props out of the way and come to kneeling at the center of the mat with the knees wide and the feet close together, kind of like a triangle. And just take a moment to check in with the shins. And if this is ever uncomfortable, sometimes rolling a blanket underneath the fronts of the ankles can feel really nice, so feel free to do that. And bring your awareness down to the shins and just notice um, the pressure of the earth contacting the tops of the feet, ankles, shins. Notice where the calves and the thighs come together. And then ever so gently start shifting the weight from side to side so that the weight just gently rolls over the shins. So you feel a little bit more on one side and then back to center and then the other side. And you're welcome to hinge forward slightly at the hips, just bringing a little extra weight into the shins if that feels interesting if it helps you get a better massage across the fronts of the legs 
start to notice the back of the hips, the area contacting the heels. You're also getting a massage there. And so as you notice that, um, give yourself permission to shift the weight back onto the heels. Mm. Getting just a gentle massage via the heels into the glutes. And we'll continue with this swaying movement, massaging through the legs. And just start to notice your spine ever so gently swaying. Right? Just feeling this connection between the shifting originating at the legs and how it travels up the rest of the body. And the head and neck follow last. We'll just take a few more moments helping soften the tissue in the legs before we come back to center. And slowly make your way to center and just take one nice circle with the shoulders. In fact, that felt so good. Um, take a few more. But don't move at your full range of motion. Let it be a little smaller. So you can just really feel the tiny muscles of the rotator cuff helping to support and articulate the shoulder. And then in the next time the shoulders slide down the back, pause there. Let the hands get heavy on the thighs. And now we'll start to circle the spine. And so as you circle the spine, you may notice some of those same sensations in the shins, in the glutes, in the thighs. And now bring your awareness to your core. And notice how your core just naturally brightens to support you here. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to make it happen. Just feel that gentle support, especially along the front side of the spine as you roll forward and then the side of the spine as you roll from side to side. And as the core warms up, you can challenge it a little bit by starting to lean back as you circle backward. So you'll notice if you lean back a little, oh, there's the core again. And then allow the circles to change direction eventually. And they can start a little smaller, whatever feels comfortable. We're always trying to connect the movements of the legs back into the core. And so even though the legs are stationary here, each time you feel the core, try to just envision it connecting down into the fronts of the thighs, the sides of the thighs, the backs of the thighs, just feeling that continuity. And then slowly make your way to center. Pause for a moment and just notice any things starting to wake up and tingle. You can hit play on the first track. What's the name of the first track? Oh, that's not... That's not the right one. <laughs> Make sure our iTunes is updated. Um, it's it, it just has to update. I don't know. Um, so you could play it from my computer. Okay, well, sorry, um, the, I guess iTunes is not updating the playlist. Um, but whatever track is first will be great. So hit, oh, it should be nothing it can. Is that what it is for you guys? Yes, okay, great. So it's on our end. Whew. Um, okay, sorry for that little blip, guys. Um, so use the hands to gently bring the knees forward so the legs close. 
and then bring the fingertips behind the ears and um, slowly lift the hips and it might feel like a little bit of a relief giving your legs some space here and we're going to do some upright crunches i'm going to turn to the side just so you can see this better slowly start to curl the elbows towards the knees any amount it doesn't have to be dramatic and then push down into the shins letting the front of the body on Furl slowly and feel the connection between the ribs down into the pelvis each time you open back up. Sometimes we um, really splay the ribs and lead with the heart and we actually want to feel more continuity and connection. The upper body down via the core to the pelvis and the legs. So take a few more just trying to build those pathways, build that awareness. And the next time you rise up, pause, and step your left foot out to the side. Let the left knee bend as much as it can comfortably, and then come up an inch. And just notice the sensations that pull you up an inch, a little bit more awareness in the thighs, buoyancy in the pelvis. Reach the arms up. And then we'll take a few pulses into the knee, but keep that integration, right? So the knee is no longer traveling as far as it can. So slow down a little, Diana. Nice, there, you got it. And we'll actually take several of these. So you want it to feel um, really sustainable. And try to feel um, the connection between the right leg and the left leg even as the knee bends and pulls the two legs apart and the next time the knee bends pause there rest the left hand to the thigh and slowly let the whole right side of the body lengthen from the knee all the way up to the hip rib cage and arm and then allow the right arm to point towards the horizon and slice it across the horizon to pull you back up to neutral. And <laughs> that was kind of dramatic. You guys looked awesome. And we'll repeat that again. So slow opening of the whole side body. Again, feeling connection. Ribs down into pelvis and then slice back up. And just take a few bounces like this. And each time the arm slices, push into the left foot so it kicks you back up to neutral. And so you've got the bounciness in the legs connecting up into the core, into the rib cage, into the shoulder girdle. The next time you side bend, pause there for a moment, observe the breath, let it fill you gently. And then reach up with that left arm. And again, just feel that core support anchoring shoulders to core to pelvis. Push into the left leg. Slowly reach up and over to the other side. Plant the right hand down, left arm up. And slowly start to lift the left leg any amount, but bring your awareness to your low back. And just make sure as the left leg lifts, there's no pressure, there's no tension in the low back. And as the outer hip warms, it's okay to lift the leg lower, uh, higher. Um, it's also okay to lift it lower. Um, but make sure not to lift too high because then sometimes the hip cramps a little bit. And then just draw one circle before we move on. Set the foot down. And just like we did in Parigasana, let the whole side body melt evenly so you don't feel it at just one area. Let the right elbow bend a little bit and put some more weight in the outside of the hand. And then push down to slowly rise up and we'll repeat that, but this time just with a circle of a leg and then the melting of the side body. And you can continue at your own pace. Let the movements be really small and controlled, slow, and then they can get bigger as the body wants it, but don't assume that the body wants that. The next time you melt in your side bend, slowly let the left hand drop towards a plank and pivot on the right knee. So the 
Yeah, you guys got it. Push down into the hands to slowly draw the knee in for a plank crunch. And then drop the knee back down and push down into right hand, into the shin. Let the left foot swivel as you slowly stack in a modified side plank. And we'll just play between those two shapes so you'll lower to the plank, lift the right knee for a crunch, and then drop the shin down, slowly stacking all the way back up. And it's actually a lot harder with the shin turned this way, right? Because it's like you're on a balance beam. Um, so move really slowly and try to feel the connection and the support of the earth and take your time as you stack everything. This is going to help us um, balance later on. So we'll just take a couple more your own pace. The next time the hand drops, walk the right hand to the right, left hand over, setting up for plank on the mat, and slowly glide the right leg back into the right. So you're in a nice natural plank Drop the knees, let the hips rest on the heels for a moment. And then push down into the shins, returning to tabletop. Glue the shins down and um, push into the hands, bouncing the hips forward and back. Our springy, froggy table. I think we did this last week too. And find your own rhythm here. And then the next time you shift the weight forward, tuck the toes under, hover the knees, and do the same thing with the knees lifted. And with the knees lifted, it naturally propels you more into a plank, so it's okay to let the legs extend if that feels comfortable. And the next time the knees bend and the hips press back, pause in your springy downward facing dog. Push a little extra into the hands to lengthen the hips up. Wow, you guys have really great alignment here. Let the breath be natural. Make sure you're not holding or straining in any way. And then bend the knees, spring the hips up a couple of times. And the next time the hips spring up, let the right foot step forward and up with that momentum. Nice. Pause here, drop the back knee, and take some nice extra slow circles with the hips. And just like we did in Parigasana where we found our end range and then we gently came out of it an inch, um, try that here. And just notice if a gentle squeeze between the front foot and the back knee gives you a little extra support, a little extra smoothness, go the opposite direction. And scooch the back knee in just a little bit more. Tuck the toes under and push down into the feet. Fingertips behind the ears just like we did from kneeling. And we'll just take a couple of crunches from this position. So slowly lifting and lengthening and then bowing forward. The front knee can extend any amount or it can stay in a lunge. So you can play with whatever feels more interesting or more comfortable. And as you crunch here, um, gaze at that front foot. Keep awareness of the front foot and anchor through the big toe and the base of the big toe. And the next time you come up, let the hands relax for a moment. Take a couple of those nice small shoulder shrugs. Um, press into the base of the big toe and slowly externally rotate the thigh just a little bit and point the knee towards the pinky toe. And just take a couple of lunges and see if the knee feels spacious there. The hands can be heavy so the arms just swing for a moment. We did a lot on our arms already. And then place the hands down inside the foot. Lift the back knee and take a couple of kicks with the back foot. Shifting the weight into the front foot. Keep weight in the front heel so it doesn't go too much into the front knee. And eventually let that left foot step um, outside of the hand so it mirrors the right foot. But take your time with that. 
Let the belly rest heavily on the thighs, head hangs down. Sway the hips gently from side to side. And then shift the weight back into the heels. Feel the pelvis rock back and then allow the sits bones to get really heavy. And pull the sits bones down and notice how that creates a fulcrum across the pelvis so the spine can slowly stack one at a time. The hamstrings create a lot of support there and we'll gently make our way up to standing and just pause at the top. Walk the feet in just a little bit so they're still wider than the hips but closer to a Tadasana. And start to um, paw at the mat. So let the feet get really supple, really sensitive. And um, start to drag the toes towards the heel. Um, so as the toes drag towards the heel, um, you might feel like a little bit of a gripping sensation. You might notice the arches of the feet, the longitudinal arches start to engage. You don't want to overdo it and create any like cramping in the foot, but just start to wake up those springy arches in the feet with a few more of these toe drags. And then relax the feet bring equal weight into each heel and the inside and outside of each ball mound of the foot. And just pause for a moment in our first opportunity to stand. Let the sits bones get really heavy so the pelvis feels grounded. Slowly reach the arms forward to help brighten our deep calf muscles. The arms eventually go all the way up overhead and push down into the balls of the foot to come onto the tippy toes. It's okay if you feel some wiggling in the ankles. Those are muscles getting stronger to support you. And then slowly release the heels down and send the hips back for chair pose. And as you send the hips back, let the arms swing heavy and let them swing back and forth a few times, releasing any tension in the arms. And the next time they swing back in line with the hips, um, pause there and almost imagine like shooting energy out of the hands. Yeah, nice, Roseanne. Your hands look, your arms look very energized. And um, notice the sensation of the arms lining up with the angle of the body. Shift the weight from side to side and keep the low back nice and soft. Sometimes we get a little tense here. So as you shift the weight from side to side in this chair pose, um, imagine creating just a little extra length in the low back as if you're wagging your tail. I know dogs have no tension in their low back <laughs> from always wagging their tail. And then come to center, push down into the feet to slowly rise back up. Let the arms relax. We're going to do that sequence a couple more times, but first let's just take a moment to let that sink in. And then it begins again by floating the arms forward, up overhead, slowly coming on to the toes. And notice if the heels want to roll in or out and try to center them. And then heels down, reach the hips back, soft low back, and then the arms just swing a few times, eventually reaching back. And on the second time, um, let the arms do as minimal work as possible while still staying in line with the body. So it's okay to always bring an extra swing and then almost just time stops, but there's as minimal effort as when you were swinging the arms. Push into the feet evenly to slowly rise back up. Everything softens for a moment, and we'll just do it one more time. If you're feeling antsy, you can go for it right away. Otherwise, I'll talk you through in a moment. Fingers forward and up. Come on to the toes. And then slowly release the heels. Send the hips back. Let the arms swing. Whenever you feel ready for the arms to hold steady, Pause there for a moment. 
And then this time we'll melt the body over the thighs, head hangs heavy, hips lift any amount, and then take a few of those tail wags in this position, letting the low back soften and gently articulate and plant the hands, lower one knee down at a time, and then pivot to um, face the long edge of the mat towards the screen back at the beginning. And just pause for a moment. Close the eyes. All right, and we'll go through that again on the second side. So let's start by Opening the knees, but keep the feet together. Hands can slide up and down the thighs a couple of times until you find a place um, where the shoulders feel alert yet soft. And then start to circle the body. And as we're warmer than the first round, you can be a little bit more dramatic here. You can play with lifting the hips away from the heels a little bit, shifting your weight to the side so much that um, more balanced muscles start to engage. Or you can be really mellow with it. it. We're all in different time zones, and we're all definitely in different bodies. When Come back to center, pause. I didn't tell you to go both ways, so just go the opposite direction next time if you haven't. Bring the knees together and push down to slowly rise up to kneeling, fingertips behind the ears, and just take a couple crunches to integrate the upper and lower body. And then the next time you roll up, bring the hands to the low back and slowly um, push the fingertips down, letting the front of the body open just a little bit. And then imagine doing a crunch, but don't come all the way down. And just take a couple of these um, baby camels, astrasana. And try to keep the hips over the knees so you're not pressing the hips forward. You're letting the whole front of the body lengthen. And the next time you bow forward, um, roll up, but don't come into the back bend. Step the right foot out this time. Bend into the right knee really generously. You might feel almost like you don't have a ton of control. And then come up a couple of inches and just feel that integration of thigh to thigh up through the pelvic floor, arms overhead. And then we take our pulses. Nice. And we're just finding that nice springy rhythm that allows this to be effortless, right? Even though the muscles are engaging, um, you don't have to overexert. And the next time the knee bends, pause there, right hand to thigh, drop the left arm, Feel the left side of the body as one long line. Let the left arm sweep up and slowly let the whole left side of the body lengthen. The knee can bend a little bit more. And then we've got our dramatic horizon sweep. <laughs> and repeat. I liked that Anjali followed the, uh, her fingertips with her gaze. So if you want to get really dramatic, you can do that. As long as it feels good on your neck. <laughs> Nice, Jamie. <laughs> and the next time you side bend, pause there for a moment. Observe the breath. Let, feel it supporting you and balancing you from the inside. And then push into the right leg, slowly reaching up and over. Plant the left hand, right hand up. And we just start with our leg pulses. So let these start really small, just noticing the right hip socket, noticing if those muscles are feeling warm or sensitive. And then naturally the lifts might start to evolve. They might start to get higher. And then eventually we play with some circles. Who? Circles <laughs> really <laughs> change the game, don't they? 
If you took a circle, you can go the opposite direction. And then set the foot down and let the whole right side of the body lengthen with ease, but also with some control. And then we push down into the hand, rise back up, hover the leg, one slow circle in each direction. And then the side body melts. Last round, bring a little extra awareness to the left arm and shoulder and just make sure you're not creating any tension there. So little bend in the elbow, little spring in the hand, just like we did our toe gripping, you can do a little finger gripping to create an arch in the hand. Well, I'll meet in our side bend. And then slowly let the knee pivot as you drop the right hand, coming into a half plank, lift the left knee, draw it towards the head, and then set the knee down and slowly pivot onto the right heel, stacking shoulder and hand. And now at your own pace, play between those two positions. The crunch helps us integrate arms and legs into core. And then as we stack in our ch somewhat of a challenging balance, we try to keep that integration. For the last round, move as slowly and consciously as it takes to feel like this is effortless. Even though the muscles are working, there's an evenness. Nothing's over powered, nothing's gripping. Nice. Take your time, but the next time both hands are on the ground, shift left hand over, right hand over, and glide the left foot back into plank. And then drop the knees and press the hips back to the heels for just a moment. Push down into shins, springing up into tabletop, and then just take a couple of hip springs. Tuck the toes under, lift the knees, and continue with the hip springs, um, but now pressing all the way forward into a plank. The next time the knees bend and the hips crease, send the hips up and back, push a little extra into the hands. Keep a nice bend in the knees so you still have that nice springiness. Great. And actually take a couple more springs and eventually let the left foot spring forward with that same momentum. Nice. Yeah, you guys got it. Take your time, but eventually drop the right knee. Let the hips sink and let them sink to their max and then come out of it just an inch or two. And then from that more integrated position, start to circle the hips and let this be just as smooth as possible. Doesn't matter how deep you go. We really want to feel ease and release. Go the opposite direction. And then back to center. Scooch the back knee forward just a little bit so you've got a shorter stance. Push down into the legs, slowly dropping the sits bones to anchor the pelvis. Rise up, fingertips behind ears, and then just take a couple of rolls up and down, integrating upper body to the lower body. And you can let the front knee um, extend or keep it bent. So play with it and start to notice the connection between the big toe, the base of the big toe, and notice um, how pressing that down um, initiates a little more engagement in the arch of the foot, especially if the knee tracks towards the pinky toe. And take a moment at the top, let the hands release, swing them forward and back a couple of times. And then slowly circle them all the way up, letting the front of the body open. And then release the hands down inside of the left foot. Lift the right knee. Take some bounces with the right knee while the right foot is still connected. 
Feel the connection between pressing into the foot and the springing of the hips. And then eventually let the right foot start to bounce up. Again, finding that rhythm so it feels effortless and springy. And then eventually spring that right foot forward outside of the hands to a wide Uttanasana, standing forward fold. Bend the knees really deeply. Let the sits bones stay heavy so um, the hamstrings don't overextend. And then push down into the feet. Slowly rise up one vertebra at a time. And we're actually going to build our standing sequence here now that we're balanced on both sides. Um, so let's start by sending our hips back, just like that wide chair. You can heel toe the feet in any amount, so this feels really supportive. And swing the arms forward and back, just like we practiced before. And then eventually let them line up with the body. Shift the weight into the left foot. Bend the left knee a little bit more, but keep a lot of weight in the left heel and just feel the power and stabilization in the left leg. And now slowly start to drag the right foot back as you reach the arms forward. So there's this counter motion happening and drag the right leg back as much as it's comfortable and then spin the heel down and slowly sweep the right hand across the horizon, opening into Vira Bhadrasana 2. And if the legs aren't in a comfortable Vira 2, it's okay to bounce that right leg out a little bit more and just pause for a moment in Vira 2. You guys look really nice and balanced. Turn all 10 feet towards the center and then actually turn to Vira 2 on the other side. So take your time there. And then release the right hand to the thigh. Let the whole left side of the body open, just like we have practiced in a couple of poses now. And then kick into the right leg at the same time that the left arm sweeps the horizon. And then bend the right knee, left side body lengthens in Uttitta Parshva Konasana. So bend your right knee. Anjali, yeah, you got it. And then kick into the right leg, sweep the horizon. And just take a few rounds to play with this. <coughs> Make sure the arm feels connected to the body so it's not too much in the shoulder. It's really an expression of the core. And now we're going to add something on. So um, from the this position. Um, watch this before you do it. The next time you bend the knee and lengthen the left side of the body, you're actually going to drag your foot in a little bit and then repeat. And so eventually we're going to just have like a shorter stance, um, but take your time with that. So from wherever you are, you'll side bend and drag the foot in just a couple of inches and then kick into the right leg, sweep the horizon just like you did before. <laughs> And just do it a couple of times until um, you feel like it's really easy to get a lot of weight into the right leg. And the next time the weight shifts into the right leg, um, release the right hand and point just beyond the foot and just hover the left leg and take a couple of bends in the right knee, feeling really nice and springy. You guys look amazing. And then drop the left toes wherever they land is totally fine. Um, point the hip down. Release the left hand inside of the foot and um, let the left foot slide out until it's comfortable. Lift the right hand for a twisted lunge. And then release the right hand down. Slide the right leg back across the mat and then eventually up into three-legged dog. Set the right foot down. Drop the knees, press the hips back to the heels. And we'll just take a moment to recoup before we do that on the second side. And so let's start by lifting the hips and taking a couple of springy tables. And then tucking the toes, lifting the knees, take a couple of springy planks. Eventually step the right foot forward. And then we're going to skip the psoas pose that we've done on both sides. Instead, now we'll play with just 
kicking the left foot up a couple of times, staying really springy, keeping knees bent. That looks great, Roseanne. Um, and then step the left foot forward, head hangs heavy. Push down into the feet and slowly drop tailbone, stack one vertebra at a time. Heel toe the feet um, in just slightly, so they're just a little wider than the hips. Drop the hands, send the hips back, let the arms swing, and then allow the hands to come in line with the body. Shift the weight into the right foot, bend the right knee, um, and bring extra weight into the heel. Feel the power in that right leg. Start to glide the left foot back along the mat as you reach the arms forward. And then swivel the left foot, sweep the left hand across the horizon for Vir Virabhadrasana two. You can straighten that right leg for just a moment. I <laughs> my right leg was tired. Um, and then just take a couple of pulses into the leg, letting that springiness support you as long as the pulses help it feel easier and not like more work. And then turn the toes and swivel to the other side, bend the left knee, drop the left hand to the thigh and slowly let the whole right side of the body open. Feel the connection all the way from the pinky side of the foot anchoring into the mat up to the armpit and beyond. And then kick into the left foot and sweep the horizon with the right arm. And take a few repetitions at whatever pace feels natural, but also integrated, right? We want to move slow enough that we can really feel our movements. And you guys all look professional. <laughs> professional at whatever this is that we're doing. And then we're going to add on. So the next time you're in the horizon sweep, pause there. And remember, as we come into a Titta Parshva Konasana, we're going to slide the right foot forward just a little bit and then sweep the horizon and then slide. So there's this constant reintegration as the legs come closer together until you feel like there's a lot of weight in the left leg. And you can pause. Bring a little extra weight into your heel. Sweep the right hand down and forward and let the right leg hover. You can drop the left hand. K take a couple of springs in the left leg. Just exploring, balancing on one leg in our um, Urdha Chandrasana prep pose. And then slowly um, kick the right foot back out into a long stride drop the right hand inside the left foot and lift the left hand. Drop the left hand, slowly drag the left foot across the mat and up into three-legged dog. And then drop the foot down into downward facing dog and take a moment in down dog or drop the knees and go straight to Bhaktasana, whatever the body's asking for. But just take a moment to appreciate doing a symmetrical, supportive pose. And then if you're not already in Bhaktasana, drop the knees, hips to heels, pause in Bhaktasana. Push down into the shins to slowly rise up. And <laughs> we've got kind of a fun way to get back to center. Keep the feet together. Externally rotate the right thigh um, so it points towards the front of the mat. And then um, internally rotate the left thigh. Yeah, great. You got it. Um, and then um, do that again. So externally rotate the right, internally rotate the left. And then... We've kind of gone too far, but I wanted to do it two times. <laughs> and so then lower back to center and just pause. Just absorb. And then if you're following along with the music, you can go to the second track. So um, the next sequence very, very similar to what we just did, but we'll have 
um, the option to add in some more challenging aspects or do it the exact same way, right? So um, depending on what your body needs and wants. And so let's start by bringing the knees wide, just like we did before. And give yourself a hug with the right arm on top. Bring the backs of the hands together. Option to bring palms together as long as that doesn't create any strain. And we'll go into those same circles, but we'll have our eagle arms here. And at first, let the elbows stay connected to the body. But as the shoulders start to warm, it's okay to allow the elbows to circle as long as you're not over stretching in the shoulders, right? So if you're not sure, um, less is more in the shoulders. We don't want to overdo it. And then start to play with coming up into a high kneel. Bring the knees a little closer together as we explore some back bending. So just like our um, Ustrasana crunches earlier, this isn't going to be a deep back bend, but just letting the front of the body lengthen any amount. And then come back to center, and we're actually going to swap arms. Um, so give yourself a hug with the left arm on top, backs of arms touch, maybe palms, but don't force anything. And then um, it doesn't matter at this point if knees are closer together or wider, but just start in the same way that we did before and then eventually get, allow the movements to get bigger until the front of the body is opening a little bit more. And then from kneeling, let the hands release and fly free. Step the left foot out, reach the arms up, and just take a couple of our Parigasana pulses. But remember, you're not going to the end range, right? The thighs are staying slightly connected, so there's more of a sense of support. The next time you're in the knee bend, hand to thigh, nice side opener through the right side. And then spring into the left leg. Let it send you all the way over to the right. Take a moment to lift the hand, lift the foot. You can play with those same circles. Um, or you can start to swing the leg forward and back a little bit. And I'm going to demo something here, but you don't have to try it right away because we're going to have... Um, a few rounds to do it. Eventually, you might want to bend the knee and clasp the foot as long as there's no pain in the low back as you do that. And so then we'll drop the foot, pivot, let the shin turn, and take our plank crunch like before. Drop the shin, slowly stack everything. So now um, we're we have an extra challenge, right? As the shin is parallel to the long edge of the mat. So now try lifting the leg and swinging it a little bit. And just notice um, and be compassionate because it really is challenging. Um, of course, you always have the option to clasp, but we're going to play through this sequence a few times. So it starts um, with the crunch and then the slow stack. And then as you're ready, you play with swinging the leg and maybe clasping it. So everyone's going to move at their own pace. Take your time. If any of those movements are really serving you, you can repeat them before moving on. And with the leg swing, again, just try to feel how the leg is connected to the core. And the real secret of the leg swing is how much the grounded hip and leg have to stabilize. You might feel a lot of warmth there. Last round, and we'll eventually all meet facing the mat, walking over into plank on the mat. Okay, 
see that everyone's in plank. So let's drop the knees, press the hips back to the heels, and we're gonna add something on here. So as you push down into the shins, slowly roll the spine into the air like cat pose, and then pull on the mat, letting the front of the body open, more like a glorified cow than an upward facing dog. So um, not too intense in the pelvis or the back. And just take a couple of these waves forward. And the next time you're in glorified cow, tuck the toes under, send the hips up and back into downward facing dog. And then bend the knees, spring the hips up and down. Then eventually let that right foot spring forward. Take a moment to drop the back knee. Take a little circle with the hips. And then lift the back knee and take some kicks with the left leg. Eventually the left leg will be stepping forward, but you can enjoy the ride. You don't have to rush there. And then as you're ready, step the left foot forward, bend the knees, melt forward wide, Uttanasana. Push down into the feet, slowly rolling up, sits bones heavy. Shift the weight into the right leg. Oh, sorry, actually first do chair, then shift the weight. Let the arms swing and then reach them back alongside the body. Drag the left leg back as the arms sweep forward. Spin the heel down, swipe the horizon, Vira two. And then turn through center, bend the knee and lengthen the right side for extended side angle. Straighten the left leg, sweep the horizon. And then the next time you come into extended side angle, let the right leg slide in a little bit. And take those little pulses to bring the right leg closer into the left, preparing for our balance. As you feel ready to balance, free the left hand, point it at your drishti. The right hand can reach up or back, wherever is comfortable. And keep a deep bend in the left knee as the right leg lengthens upward. And then on the second round, if you want to reach the right arm up and kick out through the right foot a little bit more, make sure you can breathe, Urdha Chandrasana. And then slowly drop the right hip, let the toes connect back to the earth. Right hand down, twist into the left leg. And then plant the left hand, slide the left leg back and up, three-legged dog. And we're going to get ready for the second side. So the left leg is going to swing forward in line with the hands. Drop the back knee. Take a little bit of a hip circle just to make sure we're not building tension in the hips as we challenge our hips with these balances. And then lift the back knee. Take your kicks with the right leg. Eventually, the right leg steps forward. Drop the hips. Stack one vertebra at a time. Bend the knees, crease the hips, chair pose, swing the arms, and then let them line up with the body. Shift the weight into the left foot. Drag the right foot back as the arms dramatically circle down and forward. Nice. Spin the right heel out, swipe the horizon, Vera two, and then keep that momentum turning through center. Drop the right hand, extended side angle, bend the right knee, let the whole left side open. And then kick into the right leg, swipe the horizon. And on your next extended side angle, let the left leg slide in. And just take a couple of those pulses to build um, more integration in the legs. And the next time you shift into the right foot, keep the weight in the heel, drop the right hand and start to play with lifting the left leg. But keep a nice bend in the right knee so, there, so you, you feel supported, you feel control. Make sure you can breathe. And then when you're ready to come out of it, bend the right knee, shoot the left foot back, drop the left hand and twist to the right. Okay, we're going to do that one more time. We're going to have an option for a peak pose. So let me demo it first. Drop. Actually, no, no need. You guys got this. Um, so from here, drop the right hand, slide the right foot back and up, three-legged dog. And then instead of swinging the right leg forward right away, drop the right foot, drop the knee, send the hips to the heels. 
And let's just take a rest for a moment. So just restoring, gathering energy. We just have our last balance sequence on each side. So we just want um, as much energy as possible. If you would like to take a waving vinyasa here, you can. Or just rest in bhaktasana. Feel free to grab a sip of water. Okay, and then no rush, but let's all meet in a springy down dog. And take a couple of springs with the leg and then eventually let the right leg spring forward. And then take some springy kicks with the left leg, letting the front of the left hip open as the knee bends and the foot kicks towards the glute. And then step the left foot forward, heavy hips, stack one vertebra at a time, and then send the hips back into chair pose. Let the arms swing, and then line them up with the body, shift the weight into the right foot. foot. This is my favorite part, so enjoy this dramatic leg slide as the foot reaches back and the arms reach forward. Nice, and then pivot on the foot, sweep the horizon, Take one moment in Vera 2 to gather energy and just come out of Vera 2 like one inch so you feel a more integration in the legs. And then turn the feet through center, hand to thigh, side body lengthens, Atitta Parshva Konasana. And then sweep the horizon, straighten the left leg. And then use that sequence to drag the right leg in little by little, just feeling that integration and how that travels up through the pelvic floor into the deep core and then as you're ready free the left hand point at a drishti right hand can reach up or back slowly lift the right leg but keep a nice bend in the left knee stay right here or if you want just like we did from kneeling you can gently swing the right leg behind you and catch the foot for chapasana if that feels, yeah, nice. And Chapasana can turn into dancer pose. So if you feel yourself pivoting out, like Roseanne, you were just naturally in dancer pose, that's totally fine. You can let the knee drop towards the dancer. And take a moment to just explore from Urdha Chandrasana or Chapasana, letting knee or foot drop so the hips square. And then cross the right leg over the left, left arm over the right, and just take one moment in eagle pose, letting all, everything squeeze back towards center. Push into the base of the left toe and lift as tall as you can here. And then let everything go. Swing the right leg back, right hand down, and twist towards the left leg. This is our last twist. If you want to kick into the left leg to extend it any amount in a modified Parvata Trikonasana, you're welcome to. It's pretty fun with the back heel lifted. And then release the left hand down. Slide the left leg back and up. Drop the left foot. Drop the knees. Press the hips back to the heels. And we're just restoring for our very, very last one for the final side. As you're ready, you can press up into down dog and take a couple of springs. Eventually spring the left leg forward and then take your springy kicks with the right leg, really trying to feel the sense of momentum and weight shifting. And then let the right foot step forward, heavy hips, heavy head. Slowly stack one vertebra at a time. Pause at the top. Feel the strength in the legs. And then bend knees, crease hips, swing the arms and let them land alongside the body. Shift the weight into the left. Point the right toe forward and then dramatically sweep the leg forward as the arm or leg back arms forward. Swivel the foot, sweep the horizon. Vera two. 
come out of it just an inch, feel everything gently pulling towards center. And notice if that just helps you have more perfect posture with ease. And then let the toes keep turning into a Titta Parsha Konasana um, towards the right. And then you sweep the horizon, give that right leg a break. And then each time you side bend, let the left leg drag in just a little bit. Feeling the legs integrate into the core. Then our very last balance, as you're ready, shift the weight into the right foot. Use the right hand to point at a drishti. Left hand can point back or up. Bend the right knee really generously. Take a couple of springs in the legs, just like we've done in so many poses. And then it doesn't matter how high the left leg lifts. If you want to play with bending the left knee and reaching back, you can. Just make sure there's no pressure in the low back when you do that. And it's okay. In fact, instead of it being okay, let's allow whatever side balance we're in to drop the leg or drop the knee so you pivot up towards a dancer pose. And then just take a moment, it doesn't have to be extreme, but to just let the pelvis move around on the right thigh bone. So you tip forward a little bit, you tip open a little bit, and just notice your ability to change positions while balancing on one leg. This sequence closes with Garudasana. So if that right leg is burning, it's totally fine to give it a break for one second. And then as you're ready, let the left leg swing forward and around. You can just cross the legs or the toes can tuck behind the calf. Right arm on top, just like we practiced before. And then just push into the right toe and see if you can stand up a little taller. Don't worry about hinging forward. Instead, try to lengthen up like you're a coiled up rope. And then let the arms circle wide. Let the left leg swing back. Toes down, left hand down. Twist into the right leg. Option to extend the right leg in a modified Parvata Trikonasana. You can take a couple of pulses. You can let the right arm circle forward, up and back. Or you can just hold and breathe. And then release the right hand inside the thigh. Um, step back to plank. Drop the knees and Slowly send the hips back to the heels. Take a moment in Bhaktasana. Observe the breath. We had some challenging poses. You might notice um, an, a faster respiration rate. And slowly Drop the table and let one vertebra stack at a time, coming to seated on the heels. And then push onto the knees. And I'm going to stay sideways because it's easier to see me, but you can, um, face, you can face me so it's easier. Bring the hands to the low back. Tuck the toes under and just let the hips sway from side to side. And Visualize the front of the hips opening so that the sits bones, the tailbone are, are dropping and there's no tension in the front of the body. Take a couple of circles with the hips and notice what it feels like as the hips stack over the knees. And then pause with hips over knees and um, with toes tucked under, push down into the toes and notice the sense of the whole front of the body opening and lengthening and connect with your breath. Make sure you can breathe smoothly through this whole sequence. Drop the left hand and slowly reach the left hand forward and then up and back. And just take a few circles with the hand and if it feels really good as the arm reaches up and back and the spine extends, it is okay to let yourself come a little deeper as long as there's no compression in the low back. If the hand brushes the ankle, you can push the fingertips down into the heel for a moment and lift the opposite arm. Make sure you can breathe. And then reach the right arm forward and um, 
do an imaginary crunch to get back to center and we'll go the other way. So starting with the hands on the hips, let the front of the body open and then just take some circles with the right arm. Take your time letting the body open. Um, again, if the heel feels close, you can push fingertips down into heel and let the other arm lift. Otherwise, keep circling. The more we um, continue to move, the more the core stays engaged so we don't collapse into the pose. And then wherever you are to come out, um, lift the right hand to the sacrum and just do a crunch to come back to neutral. Let the hips lower to the heels, grab onto the heels and bring the hairline to the mat. Slowly start to lift the heels um, or the hips, letting the weight roll to the crown of the head. You might need to tuck the chin and bring the head closer to the knees so you feel more space on the back of the neck. And then take a breath into the back of the heart. Let that space open and then release the heels, placing hands alongside the head as if you were going to do a tripod headstand, but we're not going to do that. And then just make some gentle circles on the crown of the head. There is actually fascia on the crown of the head, and so um, it's really nice and beneficial to massage this area and feel free to move where the weight is in the head. And by weight, it should only be a teensy amount. Most of it is in the legs and the hands, so there's not pressure in the neck. Go the opposite direction if you're making circles. And then slowly let the hips sink towards the heels, flatten the feet, stretch the arms overhead for Bhaktasana and just melt for a moment. And then push into the shins, rolling up through an extended cat pose because the hands are further forward than table. And then pull on the mat, letting the front of the body open for either glorified cow or letting the hips continue to open uh, for upward facing dog, as long as there's no tension in the low back and the arms are nice and springy. And then let the body lengthen and recline face down on the mat. I'm sort of off my mat. If that's happening to you, you can scooch back a little bit so that your face is on your mat. And with the arms overhead, lift the right leg, cross it over the body. And just slowly let it drag you over the left side. But we really want to milk the side body massage. And then eventually the right leg wins the tug of war and you roll all the way on to the back. And just take a few rolls like this. Um, so back and forth with the right leg and then eventually back and forth with the left leg and notice the sense of connection between the leg into the core all the way up to the arms as we roll here just imagine releasing any tension that has built up through the effort we've applied in our practice Move as slowly as you need to for this to really feel like a massage, an opportunity to release. And take your time. There's no need to rush. But when you feel balanced, you can just rest on the belly hands stacked, elbows wide, forehead on hands in crocodile pose. And just observe the breath. And feel the connection of the breath into the mat as the belly pushes down into the earth as you Inhale. And with each exhale, 
as that pressure lessens, notice the pooling and relaxing of the body as it softens towards the mat. Slide the hands forward so the forehead can rest. And then place the hands alongside the shoulders, gently pressing up to table. Pivot towards the screen and make any adjustments so that you can sit comfortably for our meditation portion of class and pause your music. Feel free to grab a sip of water. And we're going to do a little bit of pranayama, practice the Nadi Shodana, which is funny, I never teach this, but for some reason I really want to teach it right now. Uh, maybe it's because all of the balancing we've done, and now we'll balance the energy flow through our Nadis. Um, so with the Nadi Shodana, we actually control the in-breath and out-breath of each nostril, and this helps regulate the amount of oxygen that travels to each hemisphere of the brain. Um, so it's physiologically balancing, um, but then of course there's the energetic component um, of balancing the itta and the pingala nadis. And so um, just start by observing your natural breath. Um, if you need to grab a tissue, man, nadi shodana is um, uncomfortable if the nose is a little <laughs> stuffy, so afford yourself that luxury. How so cool, I could mute my mic so you <laughs> didn't have to <laughs> hear me blowing my nose. Uh, and so, if you can comfortably breathe through the nose, just take a moment to notice the sensation of the breath traveling up through the nostrils. And it's very common and natural to breathe a little bit more through one nostril than the other. And so perhaps you notice one side breathing a little bit more fluidly. And then to um, control the breath flow, we'll create a mudra with the hand. So just place the right hand palm face up and bring the peace fingers in, the thumb will press the right nostril in and the fingers will press the left nostril in. And so um, take a natural breath in and out. And then another natural breath in, but this time press the right nostril shut. So as you exhale, it exits the left nostril. And then breathe naturally in through the left nostril. And press in the left nostril, maintaining the breath at center for a moment. And then switch sides to exhale out of the right. Inhale through the right. Pause at center. And exhale on the other side. And so every breath continues this pattern of exhaling, inhaling, and then switching sides for the next exhale. And so you'll continue at your own pace, exhale, inhale, switch sides. And try to let the breath be really natural. 
You're not forcing or elongating. Just letting it be very smooth. If the arm ever gets tired, you can support it with the opposite hand, like a little shelf. And if you ever feel lightheaded or like you just aren't breathing enough, um, release the hand and breathe naturally. If it feels comfortable, play with letting the exhale just be a little slower and a little smoother. And the image given traditionally for the smoothness of the breath is it's like pouring warm ghee, clarified butter, from a teapot. And so use that visual to Allow the breath to just be so nourishing, warm, clarifying. For the last m minute or so, see if you can relax even more. So it feels really natural. The next time you exhale out of the left nostril, the breath is complete. You can release the hand and observe your natural unencumbered breath. And notice any sense of softness or effortlessness, freedom after releasing the constriction of pranayama. And just take the next several breaths to explore that sense of ease and just notice if the breath coming through the nostrils feels any more balanced than the before snapshot we took And if you would like to stay upright and meditate, it can be really nice to practice hum sa when you have this extra awareness of the breath. You're also welcome to shift towards shavasana. And of course, take any counter poses that the body's asking for.
Let the breath be really natural. And perhaps in this moment, um, you can really feel what your natural breath is like beyond any control or manipulation. And let your noticing, your awareness of this natural breath start to enliven you slightly from the inside. Mm. Make any gentle movements that feel just as natural as the breath. And eventually make your way up to seated, trying to feel the breath every step of the way. And we'll meet at seated with hands at heart center. Thank you so much for sharing this practice. Namaste. Hmm. Good to see you all. Have a great week. I hope your hips feel very supported and integrated. Um, and hopefully I'll see you guys soon. Bye. Great to see you, Angelie. <laughs> I missed you today. <laughs>